Welcome back everyone. My today's lesson is about approach to a child with ambiguous genitalia. Disorder of sexual development is a condition in which development of chromosomal, gonadal or anatomical sex is atypical. In a broad sense, it is any case in which the external genitalia do not appear completely male or completely female. When we see steps of sex differentiation, in early fetal development, both XX and XY fetus have similar reproductive structure, and this period is referred to as the sexual indifferent phase of sexual development. Development of male phenotype requires a Y chromosome and specifically an intact sex determining region on uh, Y chromosome and stereogenic factor 1. When we see development of internal genitalia, the Wolfian or Mesonephric and the Mullerian or Paramesonephric ducts develop in both sexes. In males, after formation of testes by presence of XY chromosome and at approximately the seventh week of gestation, testicular sertoli cell begins secreting anti Mullerian hormone, which induces Mullerian duct regression. Shortly afterward, ladage cells from testes begin producing testosterone. Testosterone stabilizes the welfare duct and promotes the development of epididymis, vast difference in the seminal vesicle. In females, the lack of XY chromosome causes lack of testosterone because of absence of testes leads to welfare duct regression and in response to the lack of Mullerian inhibiting substance, it permits Mullerian duct maturation into oviduct, uterus, cervix and upper vagina. When we see external genitalia development, the external genitalia becomes sexually indistinct at 9th week of gestation after lady cells have produced sufficient testosterone to permit peripheral synthesis of dihydrotestosterone by 5 alpha reductors. Dihydrotestosterone induces posterior fusion of the genital foldis and the growth of the genital tubercle into phallic structure, which is complete by 12 to 16 weeks. By 12 weeks, the non hormone dependent separation of vagina and the uterus is complete in females and excess androgen exposure before this separation can cause labial fusion and the development of phallic urethra or urogenital sinus. But later exposure causes only clitoral enlargement and the scrotalization of labial foldis. When we evaluate infant with ambiguous genitalia, first we should have to start from history. We should have to ask about prenatal exposure to androgens, maternal viralization pregnancy such as hirsutism, and the family history of females who are childless or have amenorrhea, which may tell us the presence of androgen sensitivity if it is positive. And also we should have to ask family history of unexplained infant death, which may tell us the presence of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And also autosomal recessive disorder, such as congenital hyperplasia of adrenal gland, is elicited by asking history of consanguinity because it is autosomal receive disorder and it is common in consanguineous marriage. On physical examination, associated non-genital anomalies or dysmorphic features should be documented. And the penile lenses is measured on its dorsal surface after stretching from the pubic ramus to the tip of the penis. And a term infant, at first the normal penile lenses is more than 2.5 cm and the diameter is more than 0.9 cm. On gonads, the scrotum, labia majora, and the inguinal area should be carefully palpated to identify the presence and the position of the gonads. Ureteral opening should be seen, and a single opening at the base of the phallus might be either an incomplete fused penile urethra or hypospadiasis, or it might be a viralized urogenital sinus, that, that is, internal connection between the vagina and the uterus. And the clitoral size should be documented. And the clitoral width is measured gently but firmly pressing the shaft of the clitoris. And the normal clitoral width is in neonate ranges from 2 to 4 mm. And the length is around 4 to 6 mm. If it is more than 6 mm, we call it clitoromegaly. So if there is 2 out of this 4, we call it ambiguous genitalia. Those include micropenis, clitoromegaly, hypospadiasis, and cryptorchidisms. So if there is two out of this, we should have to work up for ambiguous genitalia. We should not give gender for the baby. The investigation include karyotype, which permit classification of the infant into one of three diagnostic categories, 
XX DCD, XY DCD, and the mixed sex chromosome DCD. And then evaluation for the sex determining region on the Y chromosome using fish is needed. And the presence of SRY in an individual with 46XX karyotype indicates SRY translocation, whereas absence of SRY in an individual with 46XY karyotype suggests SRY deletion. The next investigation is for congenital adrenal hyperplasia. That is by doing 70 hydroxy progesterone, which should be measured in all infants with non palpable gonads presenting with genital ambiguity. And the measurements of cortisol and the adrenocorticotropic hormone. And the internal anatomy of the patient with ambiguous genitalia can be studied with pelvic ultrasound, renal and adrenal ultrasounds. On a renal gland, we see hyperplasia of a renal gland if it is congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And also direct visualization by cystoscopy or vaginoscopy can be done. On karyotype, if it is for 6XX DCD, the differential diagnosis is the first and the most common one for 6XX DCD is congenital adrenal hyperplasia and gestational hyperandrogenism, testicular DCD, ovotesticular DCD, and 46XX DCD with evidence of functioning testicular tissue might be caused by translocation of the sex determining region on Y chromosome. If it is for 6XY, the Diagnostic process in underviralized XY infants who express sex determining region on Y chromosome is more difficult because of phenotypic variability and the large number of potential causes, and it needs endocrinologic evaluation. In addition, evaluation of underviralized XY infants should include measurements of serum, luteinizing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, mullerian inhibiting substance, testosterone, and dehydrotestosterone. So this is all about a short summary of approach to a child with ambiguous genitalia. On the next lesson, I will talk about congenital renal hyperplasia. Thank you for watching.